while. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Paco Hope. I celebrated 12 years at Sigil in May. There are 300 of you here. There are 10 or fewer of you that have been here longer than me. So I'm thrilled, absolutely thrilled to be here. I spent eight years uh, here at headquarters, four years now in London. I'm going to talk to you about social media. Right? I'm going to talk to you about, in particular, because I can't talk about all of social media, right? I can't talk about everything. I can't talk about, you know, Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and Instagram and Pinterest. And all, I can't talk about I can't do all that in 50 years. So what I am going to do is I'm going to talk about Twitter and why Twitter, just, just one of these things, actually matters a lot to us. Now, if I had to describe Twitter in one slide, which I do have to describe Twitter in one slide, I would invoke the genie from Disney's Aladdin, right? But oh, goes big power! <laughs> right? Because that's what we've got, right? Twitter has the power to move mountains. You can, with a series of tweets, make big things happen, and you've got 140 characters to do it. And that's really what this is all about. We have a market to move, we have things that we have to get done, we have got to get the world to understand software security the way we understand software security. We're going to do it one tweet at a time. Twitter occupies this kind of middle ground between being timely and being clever and being interactive. So it's timely because whatever is happening important in our world it happens on Twitter first, right? So I'm sitting watching Twitter and I see heart lead go by, I see whatever it is that's important that happens. It happens on Twitter. And then the journalists pick up a tweet and they call Gary and they call John, they call me, they call whoever, we give them some commentary and then they write up their story and then it hits mainstream media and then some people pick it up and maybe it goes a little farther. It starts on Twitter. Now that wasn't necessarily true five years ago. And it might not be true five years from now. But in 2014, this is exactly how it works. Twitter's also very clever. Now, of course, Twitter's full of real people. And as you all know, a lot of large numbers, a lot of idiots out there. But you can curate a following. You can have people that you follow who are clever. And lots of really clever people are out there. I'm out there too. But there's Gary, <laughs> and there's John, and you know, there's Steve Bellman, and there's Matthew Green, the cryptographer at Johns Hopkins, all these people who are really, really clever. And they're all out there. And you can not just watch their opinions uh, on what's going on and, and learn from them by watching it go by in your feed, but you can even interact with them, which gets us to the third piece here. Twitter is interactive. A-list people and B-list and C-list, well, of course, every list is out there, right? Everyone's out there. And they'll apply to you sometimes. And you, so you make some statement, you see something, you reply, you say, hey, what do you think of this? They might actually get back to you. So it's really fabulous for getting clever interaction with people. And I think the best way I can illustrate this, we did this, uh, I was teaching uh, in Belgium, I was teaching Swift, and we were going over the usual and offline password attack stuff that I showed them how you could you know, take the MD5 hash of some password, throw it into Google, and poof, there it comes out. You know, and I thought they'd gotten the point, but maybe, maybe they still had some doubts about whether this was really important or not. So we went on with the lesson, and over my lunch break, I tweeted out, you know, 107 p.m., I tweeted out, hey, anybody got a password that, like, looks really good, but if you put the hash into Google, it's just going to pop out? Because I need this for a, a real aha moment, right? Now here's a person, I don't know if it's a man or a woman, I don't know who this is, I don't know what they do, I don't know why they follow me. I don't know why anybody follows me. And they just tweet back the hash. Now again, yeah, this is Twitter, it's interactive. 30 minutes later, right, 30 minutes after I asked, hey, I wonder, bang, I have an answer, and it's a really good answer. And so in true Twitter etiquette, in good style here, I say, hey, thanks, that rocks, it's really awesome. By the way, in case you're wondering what it was, you know, dash PL comma MKO zero. Shoot, I wish my mom's Facebook password was that good. <laughs> right? You know, but there it is. The MD5 for that is well known. And it gave the, the students that real kind of aha moment, like, whoa, you know, password one, two, three, sure that's known, but this is also known. And that's the power of Twitter. 
Now you could imagine, like, if I could plot all my tweets, all the tweets that I do and all the things that I say, you could plot them across, this is Paco's magic quadrants for, for Twitter, sort of, right? And so all the way out on the right, you've got stuff that's completely original content, right? And all the way out on the left, you've got stuff that's just purely retweeted. This is, you know, I've seen some stuff go by, and, oh, that's kind of interesting, I think that needs more amplification, I'll retweet that, right? And of course you have some stuff in the middle. Likewise, you have all the way at the top, you've got things that are purely professional. And you know, things at the bottom is purely personal, right? So you know, give you some examples. You know, what, what, what's some content, you know, hey, my cat loves me. You know, that's purely personal. <laughs> it's purely personal. <laughs> you know, there's some other stuff that's purely personal. You know, you could have something in the opposite corner, right? Which is, you know, hey, Central Jobs, we're hiring people, right? And so that's just a pure retweet, and it's purely professional, you know, it's kind of the other end of the spectrum. Then there's other stuff in the middle. Somebody might say something, oh, here's a, you know, cross that scripting filter, it sucks, blah, blah, blah. Maybe I want to, you know, retweet it, but add a little something to it. Or, uh, you know, hey, you got a software security program, go measure it with the MISO, right? That's just purely professional, it's kind of original content. Now you might be tempted to create kind of a separate persona, you know, when, when, when you're online doing social things. You might say, you know what, uh, I, I, I kind of have business tweets on this account, I'll have personal tweets on that account. And, you know, actually it's not necessarily a great idea. What you really want to draw is a person-shaped, um, oh darn it, you want to draw a person-shaped thing across this. When you are tweeting, when you are out there using Twitter, you're going to play a few different roles, right? And so if you are kind of over in this professional side of things and you're retweeting stuff that you've seen before, you're playing this role of curator, right? You're, you're seeing things that go by and oh, that needs some amplification, I'll, I'll do that. Sometimes you're over at the other end of the spectrum, you're a creator, right? You're saying new things that people need to hear. <laughs> And then sometimes you're kind of in the middle, you're the contributor, you're adding to what someone else has said, or synthesizing things. I saw this and I saw that, and you know they actually look similar to me. So you're, you're contributing, you're synthesizing. This is not who you are. This is the role that you're playing sometimes. Sometimes you're playing the role of curator. Sometimes you're playing the role of contributor. Sometimes you're playing the role of a creator. We want everybody to sort of move in and out of these roles as the spirit moves them. Ultimately, you do want to think about drawing that person-shaped, that person-shaped shape of your tweets, because you want some personal stuff mixed in with the business, and some business stuff mixed in with the personal. You know, you might tweet something about rock climbing or wines or some holiday you took, and you might find that one of your clients follows you and, and saw that oh, rock climbing. Yeah, have you ever been so so? You know, you may find that you tweet something professional, and one of your friends. Little did you know, he's just seen a memo about software security kicking off at his company. And like, by the way, you guys, why do you guys do that stuff? You know, so mixing the business and the pleasure creates a person-shaped persona online, and that's that's really what you want to do. The reason we're really interested in this, you, you've heard about scale already, right? We've talked numerous times about how important it is to scale things. Well, in many ways, Twitter is one of the ways we're going to scale marketing, right? Rather than have a team of four full-time marketing people who do a bang-up job, they're great people, I love you all, you're wonderful. We're going to add to that power people, our own people, doing some decent marketing. Now, do I mean that we're going to, you know, all turn into to spam or all that stuff? No. We have a picture we're trying to show the world. It's the picture of software security. It's that mountain range, right? And we're going to draw that mountain range with a whole bunch of blue and brown and white and gray tweets, right? Every one of these little things is just one tweet, right? And it's all of us just kind of having these conversations, these natural and authentic conversations about how software security is supposed to be. And we will then be able to actually create the picture that we want people to see. Now, we care about this at Sigil quite a bit. John's charge to me this year, which I have not yet completed, is to find a way to, to both track and, and recognize and reward people 
who are in fact doing good, authentic things on Twitter. And, and I haven't yet done it. I don't, I don't know what the magic formula is going to be. Um, as you can see, sometimes when I you know, put things out there, people gain them a little bit. So I'm going to make sure that I create any sort of online system uh, that, it's, uh, you know, that it, you can't gain it. Right? So, and I told you that you guys would choose the color of my hair, but I didn't tell you how. You just assumed that the one with the most, most was the one. So we care about this, right? So we care, and it will help you, and you will help us. Right, because when you tweet something interesting, well, Gary might see it, or John might see it, I might see it. Hey, you know, Dell and Mira and Chan, do they all have Twitter accounts? You know, Sammy doesn't have a Twitter account because he doesn't have time. But he does have time for reading newspapers in 1933. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, we care. And so like, we might retweet that. Like, imagine you say something that's kind of interesting. Gary catches it and says, Oh, you know who might have something interesting to say? And they'll retweet it or, or send it at somebody on Twitter. Maybe you know, uh, Steve Bellavin or Matt Green or somebody. And that person comes back and gives you an answer. And so you started an interesting conversation. And even though you know, Gary helped with that introduction or, or somebody's retweet gave it a broader reach, you get the credit for having sparked a really interesting conversation. And that's a good thing. And then, of course, sometimes when Gary writes an article, I write an article, John writes an article, or there's a podcast, and we want to get the word out, you're going to help us with that song. And that's a good thing. Right? So it benefits both ways. There's a really good book out there. It's a bestseller. It's like six bucks on Kindle. I encourage you to get it. It's called Steal Like an Artist. Uh, the guy also wrote a book called Show Your Work. It is about how to be successful in social media. And one of the, some of these principles are his, and some of them are mine, and, and I'm just stealing like an artist, pulling these things together. You don't have to be a genius, right? The first and foremost thing to know, it's okay to wonder out loud on the internet. It's okay to say, oh, what if something we use that technology to solve this problem? And it's okay to ask that sort of into the ether, right? And, and somebody will come along and say, actually, yeah, they do that, it's called this problem. Or, no, that's really interesting. Or, are you kidding? Whatever, give this a man. Don't get hung up on like counts and followers and ratios and, and all that sort of thing. Just follow people. I have a really, really low bar, you know, for whether or not I'll follow somebody. They don't have to have half a brain, and you know, I'll, I'll follow them. And if, if my Twitter feed ever gets full of stuff, then I just take people out. I unfollow. It doesn't matter. I am following somebody today. In fact, I was like, Ugh, God, I'm tired of seeing them. You know, but there's lots of people I have followed. I'm really excited. So many of you guys have joined Twitter, and I'm like watching the, the Tech Fair 14 hashtag. You're all already using it. My whole talk is completely redundant. And uh, I'm really excited about that. And so like, I'm following all of you now, and you're following me. It's fabulous. Give it a look. Share something all the time, right? Share things regularly. It doesn't have to be a finished product, a 140-character piece of solid gold. It doesn't have to be that. It's OK to put incomplete thoughts out there. And Twitter is not email. You don't have to catch up on what you missed. Right? Twitter is, a, is not, a, it, it's a fire hose, right? You don't go chasing the water in the park trying to drink it all and spewing out the fire hose, right? You just, you look at it when you look at it, you don't look at it when you don't look at it, don't worry about it. <coughs> and interact. You, you hit that favorite button. I hate the word favorite because it, it implies like it's the best ever. Yes. It's the like button, but Facebook had already taken the word like. I mean, it's really, that's all it is. Right, so you just you just hit the favorite button to kind of say to someone, hey, I saw that, you know, well, nice job, or oh, that's really clever, you know, it, it, it's a good thing. Let's people know that you're out there. Don't turn into human spam. Do not retweet everything I tweet, please. I don't really want that, right? And and that's not an authentic persona online, anyways. That if that really was you, it, it would be like you'd be that little sidekick from the cartoons, right? Yeah. Yeah, boss, yeah, you tell him, yeah. <laughs> and and, and you know, we don't want 200 of those where Gary tweets one thing and 200 people go, yeah, boss, you tell him. I like that. <laughs> okay, Gary, that's like that. <laughs> 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 Good <laughs> to Gary. But find your own authentic voice, right? Your own authentic voice will come out through the things that you do. Um, finally, it's worth saying, you know, learn to take a punch. You can't say anything of significance on the internet without someone taking a contrary view, right? This is just how it's going to be. And some of those contrary views are going to be ungentle, right? Sometimes you just take the punch. You don't have to fight back. You don't have to, to you know, defend yourself. Just, you know what? It's fine, whatever, man. 
Just learn to take a punch. Because if you said anything interesting, somebody will in fact have a contrary view. So what do we want, right? We want you to do it. Heck, I'll talk oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> Can you just type my password and, um, what is it? What is it? <laughs> so, uh, cancel button also seems to work. Um, that is an AD guy who knows his way around the cancel button. Excellent. So, what I want you to do, tweet some stuff, right? A lot of you are already doing this. We actually created a little thing, you know, props to Ritesh. Wave your hand, Ritesh. Because I'm in Glasgow, man. Nobody goes to Glasgow. So, we have a free Ritesh down here. And uh, Ritesh helped make it, and, and Alex Evans, where are you, Alex? Put your arm off there. Yeah, he helped out. And then you know, my, my IT guys, right, they, they were absolutely Johnny on the spot for everything I needed to make this thing work. So Sijabot is out there, and it'll just walk you through the process. If you already have a Twitter account, you're used to it. There's not a whole lot new for you to learn. But if you're wondering about Twitter, if you haven't really gotten into it uh, very much, then the Sijabot thing will walk you through, hey, here's some people to follow, here's some things to tweet, and so on. So, <laughs> buy me a beer and I'll tell you why that happens and it's driving me mental. So if I can leave you with one statement, one thought, right, it's this. Have the conversations you want to have. This is how you are successful in Twitter, right? Have the conversation you want to have and then people will sort of gradually gather around you and gravitate towards you who also want to have those kinds of conversations. And, and this is the beauty and the joy of social media, is that you just say things, and then people will sort of gather around and, and participate in that conversation. You find your own true, authentic voice by just saying things. TechFair14 is the hashtag for the conference. If you're not already following it, you should probably you know, uh, follow it, and you should tweet it when you're tweeting things. A lot of you are already doing that. And that's me, man. Thank you very much.